So good morning. Let's start lying down, please. Uh, if you could get a block handy, that would be lovely. Joined, honoured by Blue's presence today, he decided to uh, join us today. Um, so what I'd like to say is just have, if you've got one of those yoga bricks, could you just put it um, about halfway down your mat, just off your mat, but about halfway down. And I'm just going to quickly swap, this isn't a very good visual aid, so I'm going to swap to uh, my cork one. So a block, a ball, and then just start lying down, please. So just settling the body. Take your time. It might be that the back feels a bit stiff. So just allow the head to settle and then bring the knees in towards the chest. And just see if by moving the knees away from the chest and then moving the knees into the chest, can you settle the back? So knees away, knees in. So just moving the knees away and moving the knees in. Away and in. And just see if you can feel the body just starting to, be gentle on yourself, but see if you can feel the body or the lower back starting to soften. And then bring the knees in towards the chest, rock from side to side. So all we're doing is focusing on your lower back at the moment. If you can introduce a little bit of a pause as you lean to the side and then roll across pause as you lean to the other side. So you're just doing a sort of little bit of extra on the QL area. So you're pausing. It's not like a recline twist. You're very much leaning on the side, the side of the back rather than the side of the waist. That's it. So a little bit of pushing the floor away as well. And then come back into the middle. What I'd like to do now is you're going to circle the pelvis. So if you, if you circle, I'm going to say circle the knees, but what I'd like you to do is to move the pelvis. So you keep your legs in the relationship with the hip joint. It will make sense once you start to do it. So allow the knees to do a circle, but you're moving the back of the pelvis. So it's again, it's a bit like that spirograph. So you're tracing a circle around the back of the pelvis. And then go the other way. Still circling around the pelvis. And then what I'd like you to do is to come, take the knees back into the centre. Now you're going to keep the pelvis still and you're going to circle the knees, but this time it's circling, you're using the hips. So slow it down. Start to take the knees into a circle, but focusing, if you have your hands on frontal hip points, you'll be able to feel the grounding at the back of the pelvis. So circling. Takes a bit of concentration to keep the back of the pelvis as grounded as possible. And try to visualize the, the head of the femur, or femurs, there's two of them, the head of the femurs circling around in the hip socket. And then go the other way. So if you go too fast, you'll probably lose the awareness. So a nice slow pace, really nice on the hips, hopefully. And then bring the knees back into the middle and then take the feet to the floor. Let the feet be nice and wide. And then if you find the ball, if you've got one of those little balls, you're going to place it at the base of the skull. So lift the head up, place, rest the head on the, on the ball right at the base of the skull so that your chin tucks. And then let the feet be wide. So you're sort of setting yourself for a little bit of a neck stretch. Now, once you've settled, you might be able to creep your shoulders and your hips or the back of the pelvis 
down the mat a little bit to create more stretch or it's, it's only very gentle just in the neck area and then what I'd like to do is just to use your hands or your fingers just to gently massage around the base of the skull behind the ear so just massage you can see how it feels sometimes it's I can use my index and middle finger just to massage behind the ear um, just beneath the base of the skull some soft tissue there that might feel quite tender and quite enjoy a little bit of a massage the other thing you can do is use your thumb for a slightly stronger sensation so just going in there while the neck is stretched and just gently massaging with the thumbs or the index and middle fingers keeping the jaw nice and relaxed and then just stopping that for a moment letting the knees drop keep the head where it is but let the knees drop out to the left your feet are still very very wide so you've got one hip left hip is in external rotation left hip right hip is in internal rotation and then we swap that around so you lift your knees up take the knees over to the right so now your right hip is in external left hip is in internal rotation let's do that again so you lift the knees up take the knees over to the left this time if you let your hands your fingertips touch the ball and then roll turn your head to the right just staying there for a moment come back to the middle and then do the same thing again on the other side so knees go to the right and then the head turns to the left just breathing in and out slow and steady it's a really simple movement so turn back into the middle and then walk the feet back to being hip distance apart and just allow your breath again just to rest the body soothing the body so we're going to come off the ball in just a moment so you're just resettling recentering now lift up off the ball and just move the ball out of the way and then take the head back down to the floor or it might be still resting on a cushion if you need that if the shoulders are a bit tense you might need a bit something a little bit a tiny bit of elevation in the head or quite a lot of elevation in the head so just staying there for a moment and then what we're going to do is do a little bit of arch and flatten in the back a little bit of core strengthening and then we're going to use the block so if you have your hands spread across the abdomen so we do this very often but it's because it's just the the foundation of everything so what I'd like you to do is hands spread arch your back tilting the pelvis forward and just try and exaggerate the opening at the front of the chest and the opening across the abdomen and then as you flatten the back slightly tucking the tailbone feel that you're drawing the ribs and the hips together keep the head down and then do that again so you're stretching on the inhale tilting the pelvis forward and then as you exhale you flatten the back and then try and scoop the belly in as you draw the hips and the ribs together sensing it with the hands inhale arch and then exhale it's okay if it feels a bit exaggerated exhale flatten and then ribs to hips release that down now take the hands behind the head interlacing the fingers let the elbows go wide and then arch your back again as you exhale flatten the back think ribs to hips as you float the head and the shoulders up and then slowly lower yourself down again inhale to arch so stretch the abdomen and then exhale like it's a little bungee cord you're going to just draw the hips and the ribs together as you lift the head and the shoulders up 
Lower yourself down again. Inhale to arch, elbows go wide. And then exhale, push into the feet. Lift the head and the shoulders up, ribs to hips. Slowly release down, just nice and slow and relax the head and the shoulders down. Arch the back. Now you're gonna go on the diagonal, so you're lifting up, twist to the left, elbow and knee connect. And then you lower the foot, the head and the shoulders down. And then inhale to arch as you exhale, lift and twist right, elbow and knee connect. Lower the foot, the head and the shoulders down. Two more times, inhale, exhale, lift. So we're really getting, we've been doing this consistently, so try and get it to be a really smooth movement now. Inhaling and then exhaling, twisting right. Lower the foot, the head and the shoulders down. Inhale to arch. Again, lifting, twisting to the left. Lower the foot, the head and the shoulders down. Inhale to arch. Exhale to lift and twist to the right. Lower the foot, the head and the shoulders down. We're just going to do one of those core movements. So you inhale, exhale, twist to the left, pressing the elbow and the knee together as hard as you can for five, four, three, two and one and then you lower down we're only doing one of those inhale arching the back exhale lift and twist right elbow knee connect pressing in for five four three two and one and then you lower the foot the head and the shoulders down relax the head for a moment relax the head and then while you relax your head i'd like you to find the book the block please the yoga block so then we're going to put, uh, you're going to put the block between your knees. So put the block between the knees, make sure it feels comfortable. If you, you could use a ball actually, I hadn't thought about that, but you could use a ball. Just want something to squeeze into, but not squeezing into flesh. So a little bit of space between the knees. So I've got my block just, just quite comfortable and then Scoop the knees in for a moment so that you can release the lower back and then try and set the knees into what you perceive as above the hips and then lift your shins up. So you're trying to find roughly a 90 degree angle. It doesn't have to be perfect. Put your hands onto the tummy now. And what I'd like you to do is as you press your back down into the floor, can you press your tummy up into the fingers? So you really are pushing the tummy out and then squeeze, there's a lot to do, squeeze the knees together. So you're pressing the back down, you're pushing the tummy up into the hands and you're squeezing your knees together all at the same time, holding for five. You should be able to breathe though, four, three, and two, and one. And then bring the knees, just relax for a moment, bring the knees in towards the chest. So then we're going to do almost the same thing, but not quite. So you lift the knees up, set the knees above the hips. The block is still there. Place the hands on the thighs now. Take an inhale as you exhale, push the back down to the floor, press the hands into the thighs and squeeze the knees together into the block. So you're just holding there for five and four, three, press the back down to the floor, two, and one and then again you relax bring the knees in so you're going to do that once more this time you're going to do all of that and i will say i'm just giving you a heads up you're going to move the feet away from each other and then in towards each other so you're going knock kneed and then parallel it's just going to move your hips so if you set yourself up knees above the hips hands on the thighs Take an inhale, so you arch the back a little bit, inhale, exhale, press the, hand, the back down to the floor, press the hands into the thighs, squeeze the knees together, and then start to move the feet away from each other, and then move the feet in towards each other. Move the feet away from each other, and then in towards each other. Move the feet away, we're going to do it five times, away, and then in. Still trying to squeeze into the block, Away and in one more time. Away, feet move away, feet move in. Bring the knees in towards the chest, and it'll be an utter relief to just take that block away. Bring the knees in towards the chest and rock. 
from side to side. That's it. Good. Come back into the middle. That's it. And then take the feet to the floor. Arms go alongside the body. Arch your back, just like you were doing an arch and flatten. But this time you're going to come up into a bridge. So you inhale and then start to roll up the back away from the floor. Coming up into bridge pose. Push down to the feet, lift the hips up. And then rolling down, getting down the vertebra. This time as you do it, I'd like to let the arms go with you. So you arch your back, then you flatten your back, starting to float the arms up. And then you sort of roughly, when you start to roll across the shoulder blades, that's where the arms go up and back behind you. And then when you start to roll, so the arms are moving from behind you to the ceiling as you go across the shoulder blades. Physically, it should make sense. And then as you roll the lower back down, the hands return back to the floor and you arch your back. So try that again. So your hands are on the floor, arch your back and then start to roll the back up. So you're going through the lower and the mid back arms up towards the ceiling and then as you go across the shoulder blades take the arms back behind you it just makes it much more relaxing for the arms and effective release for the shoulders then as you roll down you take the arms up towards the ceiling and then down to the floor arching tilting the pelvis forward go again so you push arch the back and then float the arms up as you roll up into that low bridge as you go into the higher bridge Cross the shoulders, arms back behind you. Leave the arms where they are now and roll the back down to the floor. Leave the arms where they are as you arch your back and then push into the feet and roll all the way up again. So you're in bridge. Now this time as you go down, you're going to let the arms come back. So rolling yourself all the way down. Letting the arms go down alongside your body again. Arch the back. Once you've arched the back, draw the knees into the chest. Hug them into the chest and then rock from side to side. So we've done some internal rotation in the hips. It's going to do a little bit of external rotation now. So if you let your feet go to the floor, bring your right knee in towards the chest. And then you're going to, without touching anything, just try and externally rotate your right hip so that the right foot hovers in front of the left thigh. Once it's hovered in front of the left thigh, release it onto the left thigh and then push your right knee away. Press it away and just see how that feels for a moment. Maybe rocking the hips from side to side. So you keep pressing this knee away. It doesn't want to feel too strong. So just see, move the knee in and in and away. And then press it away and rock from side to side. Let the arms go out to the side. And we're going to go to the non-logical side first or the, the unexpected side first. So what I'd like you to do is as you rock the hips from side to side, the next time you rock towards the right, let your right knee dip down towards the floor. And you should find that the left hip has lifted off the floor, the left glute is off the floor. Stay there for a moment. And then you're going to do the, 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 the exact opposite. So you come up and then you go over towards the left, which I would say is the more, the more expected place that we go to. We're going to do that once more. So lift the knees up, take the knees over to, or the legs over to the right. Dipping that right knee, can you rest the right thigh on the floor? Shoulders are super relaxed. Lifting up and then go over to the left. So 
we're just stretching into the outer hip. Now, the last thing you're going to do in this in this movement is to drop, roll onto the inside edge of your right foot, dropping the right knee. Now, whether you choose just to drop the knee or you put your left hand on your right knee to weigh it down a bit more, it's either or, it doesn't matter, it's whichever feels better. But draw the tummy in and feel that you're trying to twist the upper chest towards the right. And then you're going to put the foot flat on the floor, engage into the core and come back into the middle. Slide the right knee in front of the left one and then bring the knees into the chest. So hug the knees in towards the chest, holding on to your right knee and then maybe reaching down for your right foot as well with the left hand. Now you're going to guide that right knee forwards and slightly to the left. So forwards towards the chest, slightly to the left shoulder. And finding that piriformis stretch. If you need a bit more oomph into this, use your left leg, press your left knee into your right leg and that will guide you into a slightly stronger version of this stretch. Just depends what you're feeling in, in that piriformis area on the right side. And then relax out of that, bring the knees to the chest and then we've got to do the other side. So take the feet to the floor. Just settling for a moment. So then we're going to work the left side. So you bring the left knee in towards the chest. Try and do it without using your hands. Externally rotate your left hip and hover your left foot in front of the right thigh. Once you've done that, then you can rest the left foot on the right thigh and then start to move your left knee in and out. And then press the knee away and rock from side to side. So we'll do that a couple of times. So come back into the center, move your left knee in and away, in and away. So you're just moving into the hip, pressing the knee away now and then rock from side to side. Take the arms out to the side for stability. And then the next time you rock to the left, go all the way over so that the left knee touches the floor. So you should find that the right hip has lifted and then lifting back to the centre and then go over onto the right side, taking the left foot flat to the floor. We're only going to do that once more. So engage into the core for support, lift up and then go over to the left, taking that left knee from the left thigh down. Coming up and then over to the other side. So now you've got your left foot grounded. You're just here stretching the outside of the left hip. It's all really good stuff. It's stuff that gets just really tight throughout the day. The last thing is to roll off the inside edge of your left foot, dropping the left knee down. And again, same thing. You can you can just let it drop or you can use your right hand to guide it a little bit more into a twist but you need to be careful if you're using the hand as a lever it's going to make it stronger so be a bit mindful of that try and roll the chest towards the left a little bit should feel nice and then you're going to take the foot to the floor Go onto your back and then slide the left knee in front of the right one and then bring the knees into the chest. Then you're going to reach down for your left foot with the right hand and start to guide your left knee forwards towards the chest and then slightly to the right. Using your, your right leg with the back leg or the behind leg to intensify it if you need that help. So if you can't quite get there, if it's all a bit tight, but it wants stretching, and the, the, the arms just can't get you into the right place, 
use the, the right leg as well. It may just be that extra bit that is required. Periformis, right in the centre at the back of the glute. And then you relax down, bring the knees in towards the chest. Hug the knees in towards the chest, take the feet to the floor for a moment. So from here we are finally going to get up. So what I'd like to do is arch your back again. And then as you flatten the back, bring the knees into the chest, hug them in and rock from side to side. Now you can either go onto your side now and come up to sitting, or you can rock forward and back and then come up to sitting that way. Okay, well done. So then, once you're up to sitting, what I'd like you to do is to come, we're just going to do very brief cat pose. So coming please onto your hands and your knees. And just make sure that the wrists are beneath your shoulders and the knees are beneath your hips. Push down into everything, so knees and hands, and then start to do a circle. But before you do the circle, lift between your shoulder blades and engage into your core. And then start to circle around the knees and the hands. Just drawing a circle, so you, you're circling the wrists and you're circling the hips. A little bit of the shoulders as well. If you need padding underneath the knees to do this, you can always get a little bit of padding or fold your mat and then reverse the direction. Just allow the hips to move quite freely, nice and soft. So you're stable, but you're just moving nice and freely. And then come back into the middle, pushing again into your knees and your hands. Draw the chest forward and then as you exhale, tuck the toes and round the back, allow the chin to come to the chest, looking behind. And then inhaling, extending the chest forward. Again, exhale, tuck the toes, round the back, chin to the chest, look behind. Inhaling, coming forward. And then again, tuck the toes, round the back, chin to the chest, push into your hands, really lifting up. Now your toes are tucked. Sit back on the heels. Put some weight into the feet and just stay there for a moment, looking, still looking behind. So you're looking towards your feet. Really stretch the toes if you can now. and then come back up into cat pose. Release the feet. So if you can go into full child pose. So you're now on the fronts of the feet. So you're just gonna push, creep your hands in so that you can really press the hands down to the floor to ground the sitting bones onto the heels. The head can go down as well, but you're just trying to really push your bottom down onto the heels as much as you can, as much as the knees will allow. That's great. Breathing into the back of the ribs. Sliding the hands forward now. She's still very grounded, but slide the hands forward. Look towards your feet. Continue to look towards your feet as you lift yourself up. And then come forward into cobra. So you're rolling through cat pose to come into a cobra and then engage into the core, lifting up and move back. If you need to move your hands forward, you just move the hands forward as you as you come forward. So coming through cat, maybe gliding your hands forward, pushing down into the hands, drop the hips, look forward. And then again, push into the hands, lifting up, pull the tummy in. And then sit back on the heels. One more time. Coming forward. Find that cobra position and then extend the chest forward as you lower yourself down to the floor. That's it, so lower yourself down, but keep the chest, feel the chest is moving forward as you go down. Now you might find your hands are not quite in the right position for cobra, so maybe move them a little bit wider, maybe take them forward, whatever. Hands are now flat on the floor. 
Slightly tuck the tailbone, lifting the tummy up off the floor a little bit. And then push down and lift up into cobra. So you're pushing down, lifting up into a cobra position. And then you go down again. So it's like you're doing cat stretch. So lower yourself down. Tuck the tailbone, lift the tummy. So a little cat curl there. And then start to lift up without using the hands and then seamlessly transition to using the hands to come up into Cobra. And then you go down again. So three times, just like cat stretch. It feels like cat stretch in the body. So you lower yourself down, tuck the tailbone, lift, so shorten between the ribs and the hips. And then extend between that space between the ribs and the hips as you come up into Cobra. Go down again, but this time you rest. Just rest the hands, moving the hips from side to side. And just stay there for a moment. So we're going to be moving back out. We're not doing much on the back today, so or at the moment. So just moving, relaxing, and then going into child pose when you're ready. So taking the arms alongside the chest, come up into a little cobra, and then move yourself back to child. Stretch the back for a moment. And then we're going to move into downward facing dog. So stretch the hands forward, really ground the fingers, come up into cat, tuck the toes, and then push the floor away as you float your knees up away from the floor. So come up onto the balls of the feet initially with the knees relaxed, and then push into your hands to extend your heels down. Just see how that feels on your heels. Maybe push the knees, the back of the knees back as well. See how things are today. And then drop down to the knees. Once you've got the knees down on the floor, we're gonna do that stretch into the back of the calf. So you take your right leg back behind you and then bring the knee in towards the nose. You can do this a couple of times. So knee to the nose, take the leg back behind you. Bring the knee in towards the nose. One more time. Take the right leg back behind you. Bring the knee in. Now flex the foot and set your right foot down on the inside of your left knee. Once you've got that, push yourself back and just really stretch into the back of the leg. Go into that above the, above the heel, lower part of the calf. Just stretching. If you need to adjust, adjust the position. Your right heel should be off the floor. That's it. So be aware of whether you're pushing your foot down into the floor or you are, are you able to relax the foot. And then come forward and just slide the knees together. Taking the left leg up behind, inhaling, and then as you exhale, draw the knee in towards the nose, pushing into the hand. Take the leg back behind you. And again, draw the knee in towards the nose. Take the leg behind you. And then bring the knee in towards the nose, but this time flex your foot, setting your left toes on the inside of the right knee <clears throat> and push back. Now, once you push back, the heel is off the floor. If you can't get the heel off the floor, please take your knee further forward and that will lift, it's, it's automatic, the knee, the heel will lift. So just trying to find that right point where you can really stretch into the ankle and then find wherever it's tight in your leg in that the back calf area. And then just breathing into it. Slowly we're going to come out. Slide the knees together. Tap both the toes. Float yourself back up into downward facing dog and just see if that's helped. Just see if you can release the heels down, stretching into the ankles.
And then what I'd like you to do is you're just going to drop down onto just your left knee, please. And then take your right foot forward between the hands. So fingertips either side of your right foot. Now at this point you might want to pad the left knee if it's, if it's not comfortable. Just ease your hips forward. Now I would recommend that you keep your left toes tucked unless you, you have a, a strong will to, it's just a little bit more stable through the transitions. But if, it, if it's not comfortable, then change it. So you draw the chest forward in that low lunge position. And then we're going to go back into half splits. This is the bit where you, it's best to have the toes tucked. So move, stretch that front leg. Stay there as you draw the chest forward. And then fold down. And then you lift up, so you're just doing a little bit of a chest moves forward and then you fold down as much as you can. Again, coming forward, so you're holding half splits, so you're just lifting the chest, not moving the legs, and then you fold down. Straighten the arms looking forward, now bend the knee just for a little bit of relief. Going <laughs> like, hmm, it's hamstrings. Walk the right foot um, to the outside of your hands now. So taking the hips forward. Now what I'd like you to do is hopefully you've got your right arm, um, your right shoulder is connected to your, the inside of your right knee. And what I'd like you to do is to roll onto the outside edge of your right foot and then squeeze your right knee in towards your right shoulder, positively squeezing and then go wide, and then come in, squeeze. One more time, <clears throat> take the knee out to the side as you roll onto the outside edge of your right foot, and then squeeze the, the knee into the shoulder. Stay in the same foot and hand position, but move your hips back again. So now your foot's in a slightly different position, what I'd like you to do is, to, you're going to make it even worse, I'm sorry, it's going to get worse. You're going to turn the toes outwards even more and try and straighten your right leg. So you're just going to, I'm just going to take my foot further forward for flexibility, but you've got, you're on your heel, you're on your right heel, the right toes are turned out, and you're trying to pull your right hip back as you straighten the leg as much as possible. And then lift the chest, draw the chest forward, keep the legs in the same position, and then fold down a little bit. Again, only do it three times. So lift the chest, you should feel this in the outer hamstring, and then you drop down. One more time, inhale, draw the chest forward. And then exhale, <clears throat> and fold down. Coming up, come up onto the fingertips just to give yourself some space. Bend the knee, come forward with the hips. Now, last one is like great. What I'd like you to do is you're going to walk your right foot over towards the left as if you're doing, um, you're, as if you're going to come into pigeon. So <clears throat> creep your right foot or walk your right foot over towards the left, little so heel and toe until it's over towards the left. So now my right foot is over towards my left hand. Yeah, got it? That's it, that's good. So then, guess what? We're gonna, we're gonna take the hips back, you're gonna love this. So, so move your hips back. So move your hips back, just stretching into that leg. So stretching into the leg, pull your right hip back. You can come up onto the heel but try and have the foot, so try and rest as much as you can on the outer blade of your right foot. So now you're going to fold down over your right leg, which is crossed in front, it's on a diagonal in front of you. And then you lift the chest up. And then you do it again, or it's only, so remember it's only two more, we only do three of these, so you fold down. And then you lift up, drawing the chest forward, fold down. 
and lift up. Good. So then we're going to go into pigeon. So the foot's almost there. You're just going to take it a little bit further over. And then you can bend the knee and you should find that you're actually pretty much in pigeon already. It's quite easy access. Once you've got your legs into pigeon, so if you don't do pigeon, it's fine. What you can do is you can just, um, you can go onto your back or you could just take a pause here. You're just trying to stretch into that pigeon pose. Right knee is just in, just behind your right hand. Left hand is in front of your right foot. Drawing the chest forward there. And then you're gonna fold forward, coming down onto your forearms if you can. So just staying there. So keep that feeling of the chest moving forward, drawing the chest forward, and then maybe relaxing for a moment. And then have another go at that. So you draw the chest forward. So really that will intensify what's going on in the right hip. And then you just relax out of it. And then one more time, draw the chest forward so you don't, so everything's done in threes. And then this time you can really go into a relaxed position. Let the hands, elbows go wide and you can rest your head in your hands if it's comfortable to do so. You might prefer to stay on your forearms, so it's absolutely fine. So that is the full stretch on your left, on your right leg. We've done everything on the back of the leg, from the piriformis right down to the heel. So just notice how that feels. And then we come up because we've got to do the other side. So coming up, creep. If you tuck your left toes first and then just inch your knee forward. Come onto both of the knees, pushing into the hands and just stretch. It's going to be a bit asymmetrical, but stretch up into downward facing dog. And you might feel that one leg feels quite different to the other. So just let things settle. And then from there, you're going to drop down onto the knees, onto your right knee, and then take your left foot forward. Keep the right toes tucked and then just say to you, I'm just doing anything else. And then draw the chest forward, sinking the hips down. And then from there, you're going to go back into half splits. So initially, the foot is centered. If you need to take the foot further forward, take it further forward. But try and straighten the leg. Maybe flex the foot if you want to. So just set yourself up. Now we're going to draw the chest forward and then fold down over your left leg, pulling the left hip back. Draw the chest forward, inhaling, and then exhale and fold down over your left leg. Again, inhale, come forward, chest moves forward. Exhale and fold. So that's the back of the hamstring. Lift the chest, bend into your left knee and then move your left foot to the outside. So you swap hand and foot. So now you're in a lizard pose, lizard style pose with the, but the right knee's on the floor. So here, feel the connection of your left shoulder and your left knee. Roll onto the outside edge of your left foot, taking the knee. So the knee will naturally go away from your shoulder and then you squeeze it in. Yes. And then go again to so go wide. That's it. And then come in, squeeze. That's perfect. Again, go out and then squeeze in. So you're into the center. Now you shift your hips back. So we're going for that outer leg stretch. So you shift your hips back until you're as straight as you can go with your left foot. But we're gonna change it slightly because you're again, you're gonna roll onto the outer edge of your, of your left foot, turning the toes slightly out. It's gonna feel quite intense anyway. So this left leg is as straight as it can be. Now, just try, it might be a small movement. Draw the chest forward, keep
Keep the legs in the same position. Draw the chest forward and then fold down. And then go again. So you're inhaling, draw the chest forward. Keep putting that left hip back and then you fold down over the legs. Again, inhale, come forward. Exhale, go down. Coming up, bring your hips forward so you're back in your low lunge. That's where we can transition. And then again, you're going to swap your left hand and your left foot. Walk the left foot over towards the right, so heel toe over towards the right, not moving particularly fast, as if you're coming into pigeon. So once the foot, once that left foot's over towards your right hand, what I'd like you to do is you start to move your hips back, straightening your left leg. So straightening that left leg, pull the hip back, and then this is this is the tricky bit. Now you lift the chest, drawing the chest forward, and then you fold down over that leg, the left leg, which is on the diagonal. Again, inhaling, coming forward. Exhale, fold down over the left leg. Again, inhaling. And then exhale and fold down over the leg. Coming up, shift your hips forward and then you should find that your, your left knee has bent naturally and then just move that left foot so it can become pigeon. And then you can release or creep your right leg back behind you. So pushing into your hands, drawing the chest forward, try and ground the hips and then come down onto your forearms. Once you're down on your forearms, try and draw the chest forward and then relax. And then you draw your chest forward and then you relax. That's it, you've done, it's really good. Draw the chest forward, that's it. That's it, and then just try and relax. So let the elbows go wide if you can bear it. That's it. Try and make sure that your hips are um, parallel and that the left knee is behind your left elbow. So you're not leaning over towards the left and you're also not leaning over towards the right. You're quite evenly balanced. That's it. That's better. And just notice how this, this feels now. So we've done quite a lot of preparation for this one. So just noticing. And then what I'd like you to do is you're going to come up. So you come up onto a hand and then the other hand. Start to tuck your right toes and then move your right knee in very slowly. Inch it in, releasing your left foot. You're back in cat pose, take an inhale and then push yourself back up into downward facing dog. Alternately bending the knees, just stretching into the, into the legs. Just stretching. Now you're going to come through to sitting. So coming through any way that you like, through to sitting and taking the legs, releasing the legs forward. Good. Bend the knees and then lean your chest forward over your thighs, taking the hands to the feet. Take an inhale, take nice and slow, slide your heels away from you, extending the legs. Just going there, so whatever feels good for you as a, forward, as a seated forward fold, just go with it. And slowing down the breath. So really sort of coming into the breath now. And if you can feel that the breath is coming into the back of the ribs, try and explore that. So 
We're slowing down the breath. And then we're going to come up from there. Now what I'd like you to do is you're going to go over onto your right hip. So now you're in a side seated position. Um, and the left knee is just behind the right foot. If that doesn't work for you, you can have the left knee just resting on the right ankle. Slightly different, different position, but try and go for the knee foot connection. If you feel that you're really leaning over towards the right, the ball or a block is very good. You just sort of tuck the ball into the side of the hip and it just provides a little bit of resistance to help you sit up. That's it. So you're just sort of staying there. We're going to do the twist. <laughs> so what I'd like you to do is you're going to turn, twist towards your right thigh. I'm mirroring you. So twist towards your right thigh. Now have a look down at your hands and try and get the hands the same distance away from the thigh, both hands the same distance away. Then you walk the hands forward again, the same distance away. Until you feel that that's, sort of, that's enough to be able to drop your left forearm down to the floor. And then you twist towards your right hand. Tuck the tailbone and engage into the core. So suck the tummy in as you tuck your tailbone and hold this twist. Steadying the breath. And then start to lift up onto both hands and then walk the hands in and sit up for a moment. Then you're going to do the same thing again on the other side. So lean back into the hands and then transition to the other side. So it might be that this, this, so you've got, now I've got this, the right hip is in internal rotation, the left hip is in external rotation. So depending on your hips, this might be a much more harder side or it might be easier, but just see, you know, just notice what's going on. And then you turn towards the right, left thigh and ground the hands down on the floor. Look at the hands, make sure they're the same distance away from your thigh, walking the hands slightly forward. That's it. Keep the tailbone tucked as, and the tummy pulled in as you lower your right forearm down to the floor and then you're twisting towards your left hand. Breathing there, settling the breath. And then start to come up, walking the hands in, lean back into your hands to let the legs extend fully forward. And then just rock the feet in and out for a moment. And then from there, bend the knees a little bit, not much. So you can take the knees out to the side, feet together, that's it. Take an inhale, so you lift up, up and over to fold forward. And just release, so not pull yourself down at all. You just let the body drop down with gravity down. Maybe you can get the head resting on the feet, but just see, see how it feels. Again, you're breathing into the back, you're breathing into the, a bit, a bit more into the lower back now um, in this forward fold. See how things feel. Closing the eyes, really come into a steady and smooth breath. And then we come up slowly, lifting yourself up and just notice how you feel. Just take a moment. So you don't need to move. You just sit up, 
and you notice how you feel. So lifting the chest, gauging into the upper back. And then start to cross the legs or just let the legs go forward or stay where you are. So just find that position, nice seated position, grounding the sitting bones, letting the hands rest on your thighs. Pulling the tummy in, lifting the chest, letting the index finger and the thumb just lightly touch, so feeling that circle connection in the hands. And then breathing, sitting upright, bringing the tummy in, lifting the ribs away from your hips in all directions, so front side and the back. And then allow the chin to drop down to the chest, taking the hands to the heart center in prayer position. Pressing the palms together as you blink your eyes open. And then very slowly lifting up again. Well done. Namaste. Well done. I hope you enjoyed that.